Smash Drunk. When it came to renting games for the Super Nintendo, it was always kind of a hierarchy where you had your first choices, and for me it was usually Mega Man X or Contra 3, or a role-playing game like Breath of Fire or something, but in the event that they were checked out, and they almost always were, then you had to move to the second tier of games. For me it was usually something like a less popular fighting game like World Heroes, or maybe a beat-em-up I'd never played before, or a puzzle game like Lemmings. The Super Nintendo has two Lemmings games, with the second game titled Lemmings 2 The Tribes. No, not those tribes. Believe Believe it or don't, Lemmings was originally developed by DMA Design, otherwise known as the place that would eventually become Rockstar North, and it was originally made for the Amiga back in February 1991 before getting a port to seemingly every single electronic platform that's ever existed. Everything from 3DO, PlayStation, PC Engine CD, Amstrad CPC, the CDI, Atari Lynx, I mean you're seriously better off listing the platforms that somehow didn't get a Lemmings port. I wouldn't be surprised if they figured out a way to get this game on a dot matrix printer or a fax machine or something. The Super Nintendo port was released in March of 1992 by Sunsoft, and it's probably the best Amiga port on the system. Not that that's saying a whole lot, but Lemmings is still a fun time and it's held up really well over the years. The way the game works is simple, you have to guide as many Lemmings as you can to the goal reaching a certain percentage, and you do that by assigning Lemmings with one of up to eight jobs, everything from climbing, floating, digging, building a bridge, or just plain exploding. To start the game you only get access to a few jobs, but as you progress, the game opens up a bit more with some impressively large and complex maps, so you can get creative with how you want to approach each level. There's 30 maps total, as well as four different difficulty settings you can switch between on this screen using the select button, so there's plenty of content here. Each lemming walks in one direction by default, so you have to herd and manage these guys so they don't fall to their deaths, or get trapped, or drown, or get burnt up. Seriously, the number of ways lemmings can die is pretty impressive and it only adds to the charm of the game. A lot of maps come down to timing, like here, I have to time this lemming explosion so he blows apart this wall here, and I failed. What's great though is that if you do screw up, you can just blow up every lemming and start over. I used to do this for fun, it's total carnage, and there's something hilarious about this happy, upbeat music playing as lemming guts splatter everywhere. Seriously, the visuals and sound in this game are surprisingly really good. I really like the underground settings like this one here. Each lemming has a good amount of detail to the point that you really have to be dead on exact pixel perfect to get past certain maps, and that is a challenge. I do have to point out quickly that the first Lemmings game on Super Nintendo is not compatible with the SNES mouse. That didn't exist yet when this was made, so you have to use the D-pad. Still, when you get things right and everything falls into place, it's so satisfying. Even doing something like building a huge bridge like this, when you get it perfectly straight, it's like I seriously just want to sit and admire it for a bit. Alright, maybe I'm just a weirdo, but still, this game has a vibe that you won't find anywhere else. It's a challenge, and it can get pretty dang frustrating, but it's a lot of fun. When I was a kid, I used to put in a password and just screw around with each job, building all sorts of weird nonsense. If that's not enough for you, there's also a two-player mode with player one controlling the blue lemmings and player two controlling the green ones. And this mode can get pretty crazy very quickly. If you want to know more about lemmings and the work that was put into the game behind the scenes, there's a link in the description to the complete history of lemmings that goes into detail how the game was developed. It's a great read. The sequel, Lemmings 2 The Tribes, was also made by DMA Design for the Amiga, with the Super Nintendo port being released in November 1994, and the game is just what you'd expect. More lemmings, more jobs, more maps, and more stuff. Here there's 12 different tribes you play as, each needing to complete 10 different maps with the scoring system being tweaked a bit. You're only required to get just one lemming across the finish line, but if that's all you can manage, then that's all you'll have for the next level. This game is a lot harder than the original, but there's a whopping 43 different jobs. There's archers, flamethrowers, rocket launchers, swimmers, kayakers, skaters, and on and on. You can also turn your cursor into a fan so you can use things like balloons and hang gliders. It really does a nice job building onto what the first game started, and you definitely get your money's worth with this one. There is a lot of content. I should also mention that Lemmings 2 is compatible with the SNES mouse, so you can feel free to use that if that's more comfortable for you. And not only that, but you can also use the Super Scope to play. Well, kind of. All you do is use Lemmings as target practice, and that's it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this to work because I don't have a Super Scope, but I still have to mention it in case some of you out there want to try it out. There's also lots of quality of life improvements in this one, like being able to pause by holding down the A button, scrolling through each lemming by pressing X, and a fast forward button so you don't have to sit there waiting for your lemmings to complete the map. 
So yeah, Lemmings is an easy recommendation. It was one of my favorite weekend rentals, and it's held up really well over time. And if you like that game, then you'll dig the sequel, which has tons more jobs and even bigger maps. They're two of the best puzzle games of the 90s, and up there with some of the best puzzle games of all time. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!